Chicharrón. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another week of the Fogo Live. Yes, I'm your host, Captain Ron. We have something super special and different for you this week. That's right, different. So a buddy of mine went to the south of Spain and he had chicharrones. No big deal, right? I have chicharrones everywhere. Do you know what they are? Basically, they're fried pork belly and pork skins and they become super crunchy and airy and they are delicious. Or should I say delicioso? Well, when I told him about them here, he said, well, no, they make them completely different there. So we're gonna go with his way. This is kind of the Spanish way of making pork belly chicharrones. And I can't wait to share this with you. It's simple and you're gonna wanna make them every single day. This is a really simple thing like I just said, but the one thing that you need is the main ingredient, pork belly. It's really simple. All you need is some strips of pork belly, skin on and make sure they have a lot of meat in them, okay? You can get them, see like this one is a lot more fat, but it's got nice meat down this end. You wanna look for some that have a lot of meat in them. That's the first step in great chicharrones. When picking out pork belly for making these chicharrones, you wanna make sure of a couple things. A, you wanna keep that skin on there. Make sure you have that skin. Funny enough, you might even see some skin with some nipples on it. Don't be surprised, that's okay. The other part is look for some that has a lot of meat in it. This comes from the belly area where bacon is made from. So you wanna make sure that you have a not so fatty piece. Now, of course, you're gonna buy it in a pack like this. Some of them are gonna have more fat. You can see here, this one has a lot more fat in this end, but when you're buying a pack, you kind of have to do it. So when you're looking at the packages, just try and pick the packages with the most meat possible. The best part about these chicharrones is you can do them anywhere. You could do them on the grill, you could do them on the stove. You know us, we like everything on the grill. So let's go ahead and get the egg lit up and we'll get this great process started. Now controlling temperatures for this cook is a really important part of it. So I'm gonna show you a bunch of different tricks throughout this whole process, how to control the temperatures and keep it so that you're not burning or overcooking your food. But in the meantime, let's load this thing up and get it lit up. We shook that ash and we're halfway through cleaning our grill. So I wanna teach you a little trick, okay? If you don't wanna get out the shop vac, you don't wanna have to take a, make a mess cleaning out, just take a regular old paper plate and just sort of cut the lip off of it like that and simply use your old paper plate as a scoop to get the ash out. Fogo starters are made from sustainably harvested aspen wood with an all natural vegetable wax. Because of our unique design, you'll get a long, hot burning fire to light your grill or fireplace. Light your Fogo the natural way with Fogo fire starters. As you can see, lighting your grill does not have to be a big project. It's really simple. Blaze a ball, fire starters, and grill torch. And we're gonna use our black bag premium charcoal today. So right on top of that blazer ball. Chicharrone. A couple of things we wanna talk about is our cooking methods here. First off, we're gonna use this. This is a carbon steel. It's actually a paella pan. Great for all kinds of different uses. It's, it's chicharrones. Steel. It works so phenomenally well on the grill. It works great on a stovetop too because it, carbon steel really transfers heat and withholds heat really well. So it's an excellent type of pan. It's available on a website. There's a link down below. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this on here. We have our egg set up indirect, meaning that there's a layer in between. There's the fire, then there's the expander with the convector in there. That's the deflector. So we don't have any direct heat. We're gonna heat this up to 250 degrees. That's two, five, zero. Yeah, I had a little problem with the two. Two, five, zero. <laughs> While the grill is heating up, we're gonna prepare something that we're gonna serve with the chicharrones. And we like to call it chimichurri. All right, we have two different kinds here. We have regular chimichurri and spicy. And I know what you're saying. No, I like to chop my own chimichurri. If you haven't tried this, you are missing out. It is so simple. It's a complete, all the different herbs and seasonings that go into a chimichurri, all in one dried container like that. Look at that. Is that beautiful or what? And it's real simple to make. I don't really follow these instructions. I like to do it a little bit differently. Equal parts, chimichurri mix, red wine vinegar, and olive oil. That's it, okay? So let me show you how to do it. It's real simple and it is so good. What's gonna happen is this gonna all hydrate and all those beautiful herbs are gonna get rehydrated and make this absolutely amazing, amazing chimichurri. You won't believe how good it is. And our grill is at 250 degrees. Our pan is just about at 250 degrees. So I've got some just vegetable oil here. So we're gonna fill the bottom of the pan with our vegetable oil. We're only gonna put about maybe a little bit more than an eighth of an inch. We just want that bottom layer to be cooking on here. So let's go ahead and spread some oil in here and get, move on to the next step. All right, now we're gonna let that heat up, let that oil heat up. And our next step will be our pork belly. And now we're ready to move on to our next point. Our oil is all heated up to 250 degrees. So we're gonna take our pork belly strips like this and lay it skin side down right into the pan. 
All right, we're gonna try and make them all fit. So you wanna make sure they're standing up and they're skin side down. And there we go. They are all down in the pan, in the oil. Now we let these cook. This is gonna take probably somewhere in the area about 20, 25 minutes. So while that's doing it, I'm gonna go take a break. <laughs> all right guys, so here's what happened is that I had to call an audible. It just wasn't hot enough. So what I did here is I took out the deflector. I took out the, uh, the convector and I put it right down on the grates. Now we got it frying at a lot higher temperature, okay? And if you look at it, you can see it's starting to snap, crackle, pop. This is starting to turn to golden brown. That's what we want. So we're controlling it by keeping the dome closed. The other thing that that's doing is the reason that we do it as part on the grill is I wanted to get a little bit of smoke flavor on that top section of it. If I just did it on the stove top or on a little burner here, you wouldn't get any of that. So we wanted to add a little smoke flavor to it because the next part is just gonna be completely fried and it's gonna be absolutely awesome. But this is a great way to impart a little smoke flavor into your chicharron. I think we're ready there. The bottoms now, the now we've been controlling this temperature with the dome. It's really easy for this to get too hot. We don't want it to get too hot, all right? So I'm gonna pull that off of there now. Let's see what we've got here. I'm gonna pull these over to this rack to cool a little bit. All right, make sure my skin doesn't stick. There we go. Kind of put your, take your tongs and scrape it along the bottom so that it doesn't stick. You don't want them, you don't want to be losing that beautiful skin on there, okay? Like this. Take that off of there. In case you want to see what it should look like, how about that? Nice and golden brown. Look at that. That's exactly what we're looking for. The next step is to add more oil to our pan. So we're going to add a bunch more oil. We want it to be about halfway covered when they're cooking. So we're going to put it about a quarter of the way up the pan like that because we're cooking over fire. Listen, when you're cooking oil and fire, you have to be super careful. It's a really big fire danger. The nice part about cooking with an egg, should you happen to get a spill and you get this big fire, you can shut the dome, all right? Just do that. Don't do anything else, just shut the dome and close the vents. But just please, I beg of you, be very, very careful when using oil on your grill, okay? Good, now for this next step, you definitely want to have some very, very good heat gloves. These welding gloves that we sell here, these are awesome for this. So. I'm gonna burp her because she's open. The other thing I did, I raised the grid. So we're gonna put this back on here and let her rip. We want this nice and hot. This is gonna be super hot because when we put that pork belly in there, we want it to just start boiling away and, and, and frying like you can't believe. It's gonna make it super crispy and super delicious. Let's give this a couple minutes to heat up. This is the time for seasoning. So I'm gonna throw a little bit of heat on here. This is some ghost pepper infused salt. Just a little sprinkling, okay? Not a lot, just a little bit on the meats. We want our oil to be at 400 degrees. So you can see we still got a little ways to go, but it's heating up quickly. And now the exciting time, frying of the chicharrones. So I'm gonna open her back up. All right, we're gonna do one at a time. And folks, at this part of it, please be very careful and go very slowly. Do one at a time, okay? We don't want this overflowing. We don't want anything. We're just gonna set it in there and let it go. Now here's a little tip for you. If your oil starts getting too hot, simply do this. Close that dome for a little while and let it cool off a little bit. It's gonna help out a lot. Okay, a couple things. It does keep popping, so I put my glasses on for some eye protection. Also, extra long tongs are imperative for this. So, we're gonna take them out and start flipping. Oh yeah, they're looking good. I'm gonna flip them over a couple times during the cooking process, but they are looking real good. Exactly how they're supposed to look. All right, I do believe our first one is done. Look at that beautiful color. Give a little drain here right onto our board. All right, now we got a big boy ready to come out. Again, you wanna drain it off a little bit, all right, before you put it down. Just drain it off a little bit. You don't have to worry about it too much because that oil is gonna soak right in. Another big dog ready to come out. Look at that sucker, oh man. If it wasn't so hot, I would take this right off the hair and just bite right into it, oh my God. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Caitlin. Uh, wait, why, what? We didn't do our normal joke. Everybody, my daughter, Caitlin, as you may have seen her in many of our previous videos. How you doing today, sweetheart? Doing wonderful, yeah? how are you? Good, so she tried to make these last week and tried a different form of it. And how did that turn out? Not so good. She kind of quit about three quarters of the way through, right? Yeah. And I don't blame simple. her. It was a really weird process. This way of doing it is super simple. Pretty good, right? It looks good. And the chimichurri just smells fantastic. Mm, very okay? aromatic. So I think there's only one thing left to do. We should try and give these a taste. What do you think? I think yeah? you should. All right, I'm gonna grab this. Oh, of course, I grabbed nice small one. She's gotta grab the giant one, okay? So Cheers. we got our bowl of chimichurri. Cheers. Let's go here. There we go. Chimichurri, I've got a better idea. 
avocado. I could stay here forever. She could stay here. You live here. What do you mean you can stay here forever? Please don't. Come on. <laughs> she keeps eating. I I'm, 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 I'm want to get this done. But that is just outstanding. The meat inside, look how beautifully white it is. And the crunch on the outside is outstanding. Now, I really liked your idea what you did with the avocado. That was pretty cool. I bet that was delicious, wasn't it? I mashed up some avocado. Just put some Tabasco in there, a little bit of onion, and mixed it up real quick. She put a little bit of this, too. She put a little bit of that. The ghost, uh, ghost pepper infused salt in there, that was really good. So the, the, I thought the chimichurri was real good on it. I think that the chimichurri, probably the liquids might have kind of softened it up a little bit, made it not quite as crispy as it was when it first came out, but that's okay. They still got a great, great crunch to them. Listen mm -hmm. to this. Woo! Yeah, baby, that's what we're looking for. So anyway, folks, I told you earlier, I implore you, be careful when using oil on your grill. <sighs> what did I say? Be careful when using oil on your grill. Not bad. You got a future in this, kid. All right, guys. Listen, that's all we've got for today. If you saw anything that we used in this video, okay, and you're interested, there's always a link down below. There's also a complete recipe, a complete written recipe for you. So go ahead and check that out. There's a link below as well. So let us know what you want to see us cook. We're happy to oblige. Anyway, that's all we've got for today. We are going to go crunch away to our hearts to content, right? You have anything else to add, Caitlin? Um, just <laughs> more pieces of this to my mouth. Sounds like a good plan. We're going to go do that. So until we do see you again, remember to get out and grill, and I'll see you the next time on The Fogo Life.